Hi, my name is Matt Hatel Masri, and today's topic is seeding users and roles in ASP.NET Razor pages with Role Manager and User Manager. In this tutorial, I shall describe the steps you need to follow if you want to seed both users and roles data. We will also look at how to go about securing an ASP.NET Razor Pages application by user and by roles. To proceed with this tutorial, you need to have VS Code and .NET 6.0. So the first thing we're going to do is to create an ASP.NET Razor Pages application, and that can be done using .NET New Razor, and we want to enable individual authentication. So we're going to use the switch minus minus auth individual. We want to use .NET 6.0, so this framework is NET 6.0, and the output directory will be seed identity. Now let's go into that folder, seed identity, and if you want to look at what it does, you can go .NET, watch, and this will run automatically in a browser. Now this is what it looks like. We can register a user, for example, I'm going to register xx at xx.xx with a password. And you have to confirm the password. Click on register and you will get this screen here. You typically would need to click on this click here to confirm your account. And this is because we don't have a mail server installed on this machine. Under normal circumstances, an email will be sent out to the person who registered so that they can confirm that their email is correct. But we will click on this and it will confirm the email. So now let me log in with that account that I created and I should be able to log in. And as you can see here, it has logged me in. I can log out. Now, the objective of this tutorial is to show you how you can seed your application with users and roles. Now, it's easy to create roles and add users into that role. It is more appropriate to secure an entire web application by roles rather than by users because you can create a number of roles and in this tutorial I will be creating two roles, the admin role and the member role. And you would add users into that role and secure the various pages of your application based on roles. I'm going to stop the server and I will open my application in VS Code. What I want to do next is simply to create some sample data. So in the data folder, I'm going to create a new class file, which I shall call identity seed data. I will be adding a new method here, which I will call initialize. The code will look like this. The initialize method is going to be a static method that takes on these arguments. It takes the database context, the user manager of type identity user, and the role manager of type identity role. Now these have to be resolved, and they belong to the Microsoft ASP.NET Core identity namespace. Looking at this code here, the first thing we do is to ensure that the database has been created. I'm going to have two roles, the admin role and the member role. And for all users, I'm just going to use this one password. Of course, this is not what you will do in real life. You wouldn't put the password in the code, but this is for demo purposes. You may wish to put this password in a app setting or some other secure place. The first thing we do is we check, do we have this admin role? And if we don't, we will create an admin role. Again, we'll check, do we have a member role? And if we don't, we create a member role. Here, we're going to check whether we have a user AA at AA.AA. If we don't have that user, then we're going to create a new identity user using the username, email, and phone number. Using the user manager, which is being passed on as an argument to this method, we're going to first create a user 
So we're going to create one of these identity users. And if the process is successful, we're going to add a password to this user. And the password we're going to add is this one here. So we have a new user now that has been created with a password. And once that user is created successfully, we're going to add this user to the admin role. Now we can do the same for another user and add that user to the member role. So I'm going to copy this, paste it down here. And for that, let me create another user, which is mm at mm.mm. And the username is this one again. Let's make the phone number 111-222-3333. Now we're going to check, do we have this user? And if we don't have that user, we're going to add this user using the password that was specified above. And we're going to take this new user and add that user to the member role. So now we have two users. We have AA, which belongs to the admin role, and we have MM, which belongs to the member role. This completes the task of seeding two roles, which we do here, and then seeding two users, which we do here for AA at AA.AA, and seeding another user here for MM at MM.MM. The next step is to go into program.cs and in this section where we are adding default identity, we need to also register the identity role. So I'm going to comment this out and replace it with another service that is needed. And in this case, instead of adding the default identity, I'm going to add identity of type identity user and identity role. And here are some options where we're going to say the maximum length for keys is 128. You can add a bunch of other options here too. This operates on the application DB context. We're going to add identity role. In other words, we're going to register identity role. So it's available through dependency injection. We're going to add the default UI and add default token providers. Now the method that we created here which is this static method initialize, we need to call it from someplace. So you would typically call it from this section here, right before app run. And you would get the three objects that we need from the scope of services. The first thing we need is the context because you have to look at this method here. It wants a context, it wants a user manager, and it wants a role manager. So here, we can get the application DB context from the environment's services. We get that object. We can even call the database migrate method so that it migrates any outstanding databases. Also, we will get by the same mechanism, we will get an instance of the user manager of type identity user and role manager of type identity role. Then we call the initialize method that belongs to the identity seed date class and pass it the context, the user manager and role manager. But since this is asynchronous, we call the wait method here to wait until that is completed. Now, if we run this application again, it should come to this section and call the initialize method, which seeds for us two roles, admin and member, and also two users, AA at AA.AA .AA and MM at MM.MM. .MM. AA is added to the admin role. MM is added to the member role. So let us run our app and see if this works. So now let's log in with AA. And as you can see, AA is a legitimate user. It's been seeded in the database. Let's log out and log in with MM. And MM also works equally. Now let's log out. This is an ASP.NET Razor Pages app. 
So let us display the roles that these users belong to. So if I go to pages and index.cshtml, I can put some code in here to check whether the users that are logged in belong to the two roles that I specified in my application. So in my index.cshtml, let me add some logic here where I identify if a user is in a particular role. So I'll create a variable called in member role and there is access to an object called the user object. And this object has a method called is in role. So I want to know if this user is in the member role. So I can put is in role member. And I will do the same thing by copying this and pasting it down and say in say admin role. And the role I'm interested in is admin here. So let me delete this stuff here and replace it with a paragraph to say is admin and I will display this in admin role variable and I'll do the same thing for the member I'll say is member and let me say in member role so let's run our application now and see if it displays what role those users belong to so I'm going to hit Control R here to refresh the page. And let's come here and click on home. And as you can see, there is no user that's logged in. So is admin is false and is member is false. So let me log in as admin. So now is admin is set to true and is member is set to false. Let me log out and log in as the member. Now is admin is false and is member is true. We can secure our pages based on whether a user is authenticated or not. So let's go to our code here and go to the pages folder and open up index.cshtml.cs and at the class level I can say authorize. This means that a user has to be authenticated in order to get into this page. Let's go back here. Let's log out. And now when I click on home, it asks me to be logged in. So I have to be logged in with any account, AA or MM. And now I can visit that page. Let me log out. And you will see that even if I log in as MM at MM.MM, I can also access that page because all it's looking for is that the user be authenticated. Let's do something else. Let's log out, go into our page and there is another thing we can do here. We can authenticate based on roles. So I can say roles equals to admin. So you have to be an admin to get into the landing page. So let me come over to this. Let me hit Control R to restart our application and go back to home. And remember that you have to be admin to access the home page. So I'm going to log in as member, which is mm at mm.mm. Now, if I log in, it will tell me access denied because members are not allowed. You have to be an admin. So let me log out of here and log in again as admin, which is aa at aa.aa .aa and the password. And now I'm allowed to enter into this home page. Of course, the privacy page has no restrictions. We only added restrictions to the home page. Another thing that you can do also is to say that you only allow admins or members. So I can say comma member. You could have multiple roles that are allowed to access a page. So now if we refresh and go back in again, now I'm allowed to be in here because I'm logged in as AA. Previously, when I logged in as MM, which is a member, I was not allowed. Now I should be allowed. 
and as you can see I'm allowed into the home page. This tutorial has taught us how we can seed users and roles and how we can secure our web application based on users or also on roles. I hope you found this video useful and if you did please give it the thumbs up. Thank you and see you in the next video.